on this greatest mood change in the history of the world, on this blessed Easter Sunday, I say to you, good morning. Good morning, Christians. Welcome to the house of God. May God this day fill us with his spirit and fill us with true joy. St. Augustine, almost 2,000 years ago, said, for the Christian, Easter is our heart and Alleluia is our song. Let us join together on the bottom of page three with the Easter greeting. Today, my friends, we come to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Let us draw near him in worship and praise, in humble sincerity and bold confidence. Christ is risen. risen Alleluia. Our opening hymn is printed on the next page, page four, Jesus Christ is risen today. Let us rise. Christ is risen. risen This is the day the Lord has made. Dear friends, if not for this day, our guilt before God for wicked thoughts, hurtful words, and so many selfish acts would remain. Christ's death on the cross would be meaningless and our standing before God hopeless. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. 
His resurrection on Easter Sunday is the Father's declaration that the payment made for sin on Good Friday was sufficient. Because of this day, you stand forgiven before God. If not for this day, death would remain an unstoppable foe. Not only would it separate us from all for which we labor in this life, it would sever us from God and those we love never to be reunited. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, just as death came through Adam. So also the resurrection of the dead comes through Christ. Because of this day, you too will rise from your grave. If not for this day, our faith and religion would be pointless. All worship and prayer, self-denial and struggle against sin would only make for a miserable existence in this life and get us nowhere in the life to come. But Christ has ind indeed been raised from the dead by raising on the third day, just as he said. Jesus proved every claim about himself to be true and every promise made to us trustworthy. Because of this day, whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is risen. Alleluia. We respond with our hymn of praise printed on the next page. See what a morning.
we pray. O God, you made the dawn of this most holy day shine with the glory of our Lord's resurrection. Grant that we, who have been raised from the death by sin, by your life-giving spirit, may worship you in sincerity and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. You may be seated. Our first lesson for this most fantastic day celebration it takes us to a picture, a snapshot from the Old Testament, Isaiah, the 25th chapter. There, the prophet, under inspiration, looked ahead to see the result of this glorious day. We read from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of armies will prepare for all people a banquet of rich food, a banquet of aged wines with the best cuts of meat and with the finest wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that covers all peoples, the burial cloth stretched over all nations. He has swallowed up death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. He will take away the shame of his people throughout the earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day, it will be said, Look, here is our God. We waited for him, and he saved us. This is the Lord. We waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. We continue with our hymn of response, Morning Breaks Upon the Tomb. Our second lesson, or epistle lesson, takes us to 1 Corinthians 15, beginning at verse 51. Look, I tell you a mystery, we will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the blink of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed, for this perishable body must put on imperishability and this mortal body put on immortality. But once this perishable body has put on imperishability, and this mortal body has put in on immortality, then what is written shall be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law, but... Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. For as in, as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. Alleluia. One time I ask you to rise again for the reading of our gospel lesson, the blessed 
Easter Gospel is recorded in the Gospel of St. John, the 20th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she left and ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she told them, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciples went out, heading for the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and got to the tomb first. Bending over, he saw the linen cloths lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was following him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there. The cloth that had been on Jesus' head was not lying, was not lying with the linen cloths, but was folded up in a separate place by itself. <coughs> then the other disciple who arrived at the tomb first also entered. He saw and believed. They still did not yet understand the scriptures that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside facing the tomb weeping. As she wept, she bent over looking into the tomb. She saw two angels in white clothes sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head, the other at the feet. They asked her, Woman, why are you weeping? She told him, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. After she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, though she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing he was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you carried him off, tell me where you laid him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and replied in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus told her, do not continue to cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my father and to your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. She also told them the things he said to her. This is the gospel of our Lord. Maybe seated. My dear friends in Christ, this is quite a week. Beginning today, and quite a week leading up to this day, Holy Week. Sometimes I'm more disciplined than at other times, but... Yesterday I was stress eating, big shocker. I went over to the convenience store right over here. I pulled in, I had my heart set upon a recess peanut butter with the caramel, have you tried those? Those are fantastic. So I picked up one of those and I stood in the line and in front of me was a woman doing that lotto thing. Have you ever experienced that? I'm going to have three of these and four of these, and here are my numbers for this lottery, and I need a couple of those and one of those and four of those, and I was not in a rush, and I'm pretty sure I did not make any kind of noise, uh, go, go home for a, a sigh. I might have rolled my eyes, but she wouldn't have saw that. I'm waiting patiently behind her, and when I think she's done, she goes, oh, and one more. Powerball ticket by itself. Then she turned. She handed me this. She said, thank you, hon, for your patience, and gave me a ticket to the Powerball. And up on the sign, and also printed here, estimated jackpot, $935,000,000. What do I do with this? $935 million, that is a lot of money. And of course, I know the chances, but if those numbers were to come up or have come up, I'm not sure when they do the drawing. That would change my life profoundly. In some ways for good and probably some ways not for such good. But that is a substantial amount of money. That's almost a billion dollars. 
What do you do with that? How would that change my life? How would it change yours? But dear friends in Christ, this is Easter Sunday, and it begs the same question. How does this change your life? How does it change mine? Let's marvel at the words before us in our text, and we're going to contemplate and meditate upon the fact that what happened this day is rational. It did happen. And it's merciful. And it's personal. And it's absolutely wonderful. Rational. Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. Not filled with hope, not filled with faith, not expecting to find Jesus alive, even though Jesus had promised it. She went to the tomb to honor a dead friend. She went to the tomb looking for a corpse. She was rather put off when that corpse was not there. She was and would be one of the very first to witness the resurrection of Christ, even though she was in no way expecting Christ alive. She ran back, told the disciples, the disciples went to the tomb. John stood outside scratching his head, and he rationalized. He tried to figure out what was going on. Grave robbers? No. Everything that anyone could rob from this tomb was still there. The only thing missing was a body. Was it a friend? Was it an enemy? Well, what would that accomplish? And if somebody were to steal the body of Jesus, why would they take the grave clothes off him? Why not keep him wrapped up and take him as is? So they were confused. They were confounded by the scene. It took much time and many convincing proofs for the women and finally for the disciples to understand the significance of this day and the fact that everything they never expected nor could ever believe took place, that Jesus was physically alive. When Mary finally got it, she grabbed on to Jesus and would not let go. It changed her, and it changed those apostles. It changed those disciples, and it is changing people's lives to this very day in a way that I could barely describe to you. Because Jesus lives, and it's a fact, that changes everything. Many people think of Christianity or a religious system like Christianity as something based on faith, and we are saved by faith in Christ, absolutely. But faith does think. Faith does examine the evidence. Who were the first witnesses of Jesus' resurrection? It was women. And let me tell you, that climate, that day, that age, was not friendly to the testimony of women. Women's testimony was not valid in the court of law. I know, it's not right. And one of the great thinkers in the Greek world, a philosopher named Celsus, scoffed at Christianity. To think, he said, that men would believe the hysterical rantings of a woman is absolutely unthinkable and ridiculous, but Jesus, loving all, was honored first to appear to women. And that's what Scripture says. If somebody were cooking the books, it would not read that way, but it happened. And consider those apostles who finally came around to recognizing the physical resurrection of Jesus. Every one of them, save John, lived a life of persecution, imprisonment, poverty, and every one of them was martyred for their belief in the resurrection. Not only them, but many others. Jesus' own brother, James, during Jesus' ministry, during his life, thought Jesus had lost his mind. 
But we're told that Jesus appeared also to him. And James became the leader of the church in Jerusalem. And James was stoned for his faith in the resurrection. He was martyred for his belief, having witnessed Christ alive. You don't die for a hoax. And Christianity, from a few to the most dominant force in the world in three generations, spreading from city to city the world over, spreading even to us, this happened. This is a fact. Christ rose again. He is alive. Now, that does change everything. But not only does the fact that he rose again change everything, look at Jesus in our lesson this Easter, how merciful he is with Mary. Mary was weeping, kind of gross globs of snot and tears, thinking she was speaking to a gardener. She begged him to just let her know where the body was laid, and she would do whatever it takes to honor that dead Jesus. And Jesus appeared to her. What did he do? Did he say, what in the world is wrong with you, woman? No, he said, Mary, he knew her by name. He knows you by name. And you might imagine, like I do, that a holy God that knows everything about me, all that I've done, all the wickedness and lies I've told, you'd think a holy God would run for me. But Jesus not only does not run from you, for me, he runs to you every time. He knows your name. He is drawn in infinite mercy and love to you, for it is for you that he bled out and died on that cross, paid your debt in full, and his resurrection proves the check did not bounce, that your sins are forgiven, and he is so gentle. He delights in you. Let me ask you a question. Two questions, really. Why was the stone rolled away from the tomb? To let Jesus out? No, I saw nodding. No. Jesus, even though he was alive and physical, could walk through walls, he could walk through. He was probably out before the stone was rolled away. Why was the stone rolled away? To let people in, to see the tomb empty. And then, the second question, did Mary find Jesus, or did Jesus find Mary? Jesus found Mary. Did you find Jesus, or did Jesus find you? Was there a little bit of water in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that created deep within your heart a knowledge, a belief, that God has saved me, that I am savable, that chief of sinners, though I be, Jesus shed his blood for me, that Jesus runs to you, to me, with the announcement of his grace, his love, his mercy, his gentleness, his forgiveness, that he yearns to give you all that he has won for you, that he will never leave you or forsake you. Behold how gentle, how merciful a risen Lord is. And consider how personal. Not only did Jesus know Mary by name, but Jesus gave Mary a job. Go and tell the disciples that I am going on ahead of them. Go and tell them that I am alive. So not only the first witness, but the first missionary, Mary. God has called you to tell the world too. How much? $935 million? That's a lot of money. But that pales in comparison, my dear friends, 
to what the resurrection cost God and the value it is to you and me. Consider our life. I mean, <clears throat> without Jesus, we were born, we're in a box. We try to fill that box with good experiences and nice things, and then we die, and then we're put into a box, and we're lowered into the ground, and that's it. But because Christ is risen, your life has meaning. God delights in you for Christ's sake. Your sins are forgiven. You have a purpose. You have a job. You have a mission. You have a family. Those loved ones who have gone before, who were laid to rest in the ground, will rise again with you, and you with them, and all believers will stand in the presence of God forever because of this day. If I win that kind of money, I most certainly would probably move to a nicer home. But because Christ is risen, the forwarding address for me is not of this world. It is with him. I shared this in the morning service. Someday this conversation might happen. Somebody might say to Stephanie, Stephanie, how is Jeff? Stephanie will say, well, he's fine. Well, I heard he was sick. He was in the hospital. He was. But Jesus pulled him through. So he's home? Yeah, he's home. That could go either way. Either I'm home watching MTV in my underwear or I am ultimately home. All because of Easter. Easter changes everything. We love our kids. We love our grandkids. We love our spouses. We love our neighbors. And we try to instill in them a knowledge of their worth. How much we love them. But because Easter, our love for them is nothing compared to God's love for them. And we try to deal with the insecurity that is a part of every human life, right? If I'm around young pastors who are good speakers and I'm kind of older and I'm not so young anymore, I feel a little insecure. If you're rich but you're around real rich people, you feel a little insecure. If you're a good athlete but you're around elite athletes, you feel a little insecure. If you're good at your job, but you're around somebody who's an expert at your job, you feel a little insecure. We spend a lot of this life feeling insecure. So what do we do? We say, well, buck up. Have confidence. Tell yourself you can do anything you dream to do and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Does that work? If you're five foot four, a senior on the basketball team, you are dreaming and you want to play in the NBA. How is that going to work for you as you ride the pine? You can have all the confidence in the world, but it doesn't give you true security. But because of this day, consider this, someone you adore adores you. Someone you adore, God delights in you. He can't keep his eyes off of you. That is most certainly true. Someone you respect respects you. That very one who any other person would have said to hell with this world, but he held to those beams for the joy of having you with him forever. I respect him but he respects you. Someone great actually thinks you're great. The very one who created this world at his word, the one that laid out the galaxies at his word, the one that understands all physics and everything within the brain, everything within existence, the one who made it all thinks you are great because of this day. That's a real identity. And that's true confidence. 
And that's something I want for you. That's something I want for my kids, my grandkids, those who are near, those who are far off. And like Mary, we are sent to tell them too. Because of this Holy Week, Jesus, God Almighty, says, I love you personally. I love you expensively. And I love you eternally. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. So what do I do with this? If anybody wants it, it's yours. We have a fortune greater than that, and it's ours because Christ lives. Alleluia. Amen. At this point in the service, we continue with our musical offering, an opportunity to let God's delight just roll over us and to give our prayers for those maybe who are not here that we want to rejoice in this day too. It is time for our musical offering. Because you live, we live. Because this day, everything is changed. We give of the gifts you have given us that you might share this indescribable wealth with those who have it not. Use us as instruments of your peace. Fill us with your spirit in the joy of this day, today and always. Amen. This time we respond with a beautiful hymn of Easter. It's printed on page 10. It's entitled, Awake My Heart with Gladness.
One last time, I invite you to rise with me as we join in confessing the Christian faith as Christians have for nearly 2,000 years and are confessing this day around the world. We'll confess it with the words of the Apostles' Creed. It's printed on page 11. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of all grace, we thank you for the priceless gift of eternal life in your Son, by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, and by the faithful testimony of the apostles. You have assured us of the fact that our faith stands on a sure and solid and unmovable foundation. We are built upon the rock of the resurrection of Jesus. Lord, help us to experience the reality of this wealth you have poured into our heart. Help us to wake every day knowing that the sins of yesterday are gone. Help us to know every day, even though we may have worked and been part of hell's paid staff, that your grace, the debt you paid on the cross, is more than enough to wipe that slate clean. That you do not run from us, but run to us. That you have torn that curtain in two. You hear our prayer, and you know us by name. What love we see this day. Love that has found us. And yet, by this afternoon, we may find ourselves filled with stress and frustration. And the questions come up, what about this and what about that? And who's going to do this and who's going to do that? And how will this be straightened out? Lord God, give us your spirit and fill us with your peace. Help us know that all things ultimately work out to a good that you have prepared for us and that your job was not to free us from the troubles of this life, but to pull us through them to your side for eternity. For this life in all its years is but a second compared to the glory that will be ours with you because of this day. Bless our children, our grandchildren, our loved ones, our relatives, our neighbors, the strangers across the street. Bless those who do not know of this great wealth that is theirs, for you know them and you love them. Help us to tell them. Help them to see that this day, the day of resurrection, is the greatest day for them, the greatest day for all. In a world that is suffering, with loved ones who are in trouble, with people who are in the hospital, with family members who have been taken from us. Break through the gloom. Shine directly with your love into our hearts. Seek us out and assure us of your favor and give us the strength to endure. Pull us through the troubles of this week and the days to come. Pull us through death itself to be with you. This prayer is for the people of this world. Reconcile them to one another and to yourself. May the message of salvation flood the world. May the good news of what you have done and won conquer the hardness of our heart, our prejudice, our hatred, and our divisions. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with us as we travel. Be with us as we visit be with us as we feast and fill us with the true joy of salvation. In your name we pray, for you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ is risen. risen Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we turn our attention to our closing hymn printed on page 10. It is entitled, nope, not 10. It's called page 12. Alleluia, alleluia, hearts to heaven. If you're so inclined, rise for the third voice and wish one another a blessed Easter. This is our closing hymn.